Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another MAMG Let's Play of Angels of Death. When we left off, a lot of crazy things happened. We found out that Dr. Danny is still alive, and we visited Zach's home, which, good lord, it is a sad, depressing place. It's, it's just, oh, it's in shambles, and it just makes your heart break. But anyways, at least Ray and Zach are reunited together, so that is 100% amazing. I'm guessing we need to follow this blood trail, though. This door is open, and the blood trail leads this way. Did Dr. Danny pass through here? Probably? Hey, Zach. Huh? What's up? Earlier, you referred to yourself as a monster. Does that mean you're not human? I also like the fact that he's walking in front, like he's leading the way even though he's injured. He's such a gentleman. Well, let me ask you. Define human for me. What's a decent human being to you? Those desired by God? Huh? What the hell? Is that all you freaking think about? Anyway, I'm a decent and normal guy no matter what. Oh, Or am I something else? I think you're a decent guy. Does your so-called God say it's unforgivable to be killed by a monster? No, my God doesn't say that. My God doesn't say that. Look, you're getting all serious now. Ah, uh, I said something dumb. <sighs> Let's get going. Poor Zach. He's trying. Hey, Zach. Were you staying in that room where I found the knife? What about that room? I was just curious. Huh? This... Had to do with what we talked about earlier, but I know nothing about you, Zach. Yeah, for some reason, I just got curious. What the hell? Man, you're weird. Um, I think that room could use a bit more tidying up. <laughs> really? Oh, who cares? It's not like I'm ever going back there again, so it doesn't matter anyway. True. I mean, we're leaving. A ripped painting of a snake adorns the wall. Oh, I wonder if that's where the snake... Good God. Yeah, you think? You hear something? I did too. My entire body felt it. Snakes? Girl, run. Whoa. Hey, stop spacing out. It's the real thing this time. Run! Go on ahead without me, and find a way out of here. Ah! I can't slash them all in one go with this dinky knife. Hey, I thought I told you to hurry. Uh, okay. Found the exit, and it's unlocked. Zack, there's a way out. Here. I'm coming, so wait for me. Hurry, Zack. She just got sprayed. She just got sprayed. Uh. What is going on? Who? Zach? This is bull. I can't rub my sights too heavy. What kind of torture are you putting me through? Oh no, Zack, you're bleeding. Hey, let's move. I didn't kill all the snakes. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, Zack, oh, Zack, dude, he's bleeding so much. I don't, I don't like it. No. I feel weak again. Stay put and take it easy. It might be fatal. Hey, I told you that I'd take more, uh, it'd take more. Can I read, please? I told you that it'd take more than this to take me down. Nope, I won't have it. Stay put. That, that look on your face. Zack, just take it easy here. 
From here on out, I'll manage by myself. I promise to find some medicine this time. Hey, you've been acting weird for a while now. What the hell's gotten into you? Huh? That gloomy face. What? Do you know something I don't? No, I... Never mind that. I gotta find some medicine as soon as possible. Don't ignore my question. Plus, you're as good as dead out there without me. Oh, I have a gun. As long as I have this, even if that doctor's around. Alright, let me see it. Hey. Let me see it. What, what happened? Bang. What? What? Crap. No bullets. Hey, what's the point in packing an unloaded gun? What are you thinking? Ah, if that's all you're taking, then you're just going to get yourself killed out there. Aren't you willing to be killed by me? Even so, you're freaking out over the fact that I could bite the big one. What do you want from me? What's going through your head? You swear to God for me. <laughs> Here we go again. Can you really trust a monster to follow through on a promise like that? You're not a liar, right? Nope. My word is my word. Then... But... There's no God in this world. You're wrong. Huh? If no God exists, then what... What am I supposed to do? But Zack, it's not just that you swore to God for me. Even if someone were to swear to God for me, it wouldn't be the same. What then? I... don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. What the hell's up with you? Do me a favor. And smile. Huh? But right now, I don't know if I can do it right. I know you suck at it. Just do it. Ah, <laughs> uh, how can that not put a smile on your face? She tried. Zack? I'm gonna sleep now. Do whatever you like. Hey. Take this. It's probably too much for you, though. Zack. Oh, I can't. I can't. Come on. You're going to do this to me? You're going to make him ask her to smile, and then he's going to pass out, and right before he does, he's going to give her the only weapon he has to defend himself so that she can fend for herself? Oh, game, you can't do this to me. My heart can't take it. Ah, uh, okay. The blade edge of the dirty knife gleams with sharpness. Acquired the knife. This knife... I wonder if I can wield it. Probably not. Oh, look how concerned she is. Zack, buddy. I hope you're gonna be okay. Ah, oh, crap. We're not gonna be okay. There goes all my sentiment. The sweet scent. Phew. It's getting to me. It's making me feel woozy. Smells like it must be dangerous. I gotta... Gotta hurry. Okay, hurry. The cage shut. That's fine, there's a thing here. Upon closer inspection, the water is running with a faint, pungent odor. There's something at the bottom of the water. I think I can press it. Could it be a switch? Oh, she just got sprayed, didn't she? This water would burn my skin if I touch it. I gotta press the switch without letting the water touch my skin. Use your knife. 
I wonder if I could dip my knife in this water. Ah! <laughs> it opened! The knife. Uh, it's alright. Good. What is this? There's a lever, but it won't operate. It appears it must be, uh, power must be supplied to operate it, okay? There's an electrical cord, but it's been severed. If I could somehow supply power. Um... The knife? The knife's made of metal. Electricity should pass through it. Here goes nothing. How are you gonna pick it up, though? Now the power supply. Lever can now be operated. So his knife has already come in handy twice. Really? Alright, now it should work. I gotta hurry and remove the knife from the electrical cord. Please don't electrocute yourself. Electricity's passing through the knife. The knife? Did you take it? Girl, you're crazy. The handle's somewhat melted. The blade's still fine. I wonder if it's okay to keep using it like this. Ooh, the mirror adorns the mall. What to do? There doesn't seem to be anything else in here. This mirror, can I break it with my knife? Ooh. Should I do nothing? Let's do nothing. Hang on, I'm gonna save, is what I'm gonna do. Not saying it's bad luck, but it's too easy. You used the knife twice already. Is it really gonna work? We're gonna have to run away? I did it. It kinda looks like a knife is stabbing a knife. The mirror's rigid, but it looks like Zack's knife could penetrate it. Alright. It's a lot of bad luck too. Just saying. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are we bleeding? Oh. The knife. The mirror broke, but the knife blade got chipped in the process. Sorry, Zack. It looks like I could pass through the mirror. Uh, okay, it looks like we gotta go here. The sound of an organ. I hear it coming from further back of here. Gotta keep going. Yeah, pretty much. This is... Oh, no. Of course he is. Uh, what's with the sweet scent? Do you not think that it's God's will to determine which shall come to pass? Should the will of God differ from your own, what then will you do? There's no God in this world. No. No, no, stop it! I want Zack to kill me. I don't want him to die. But if God doesn't acknowledge me, or if he doesn't exist, then what am I supposed to do? No, now's not the time to think of such things. At any rate, I gotta hurry and get medicine. Gotta get the medicine. Here he is again. God desires to appear and sincere, hence I inquire, what art thou? A sacrifice, an angel. Or if thou art someone who seeketh salvation from him, reveal all and repent thy sins here. Yep, I remember that. Okay, can we just hide in the bookshelf? Probably not. Okay, so nothing over here. We gotta talk to him. Why do you return alone, Rachel Gardner? And what became of Zack? Did you leave him behind? Uh, no, Zack can't move, so I just came here for some medicine to treat his wounds. I know that Dr. Danny came to this floor and has medicine. That's why... Oh, Danny, is it? That man is on a rampage of mindless self-indulgence. I truly wonder when his downward spiral began. Ah, come to think of it. Danny is the one who brought thee here. Speechless, are we? Uh, never mind that. Is there no medicine here? Where did Danny go with the medicine? 
It appears Danny is not himself. He briefly revealed himself to me. Though, his current whereabouts? Only God knows. Although he had left his selfless... Selfless... Selfishness? <laughs> to get the best of him, I took several vials of medicine from him. Then you know where I can find some? Indeed. Please, let me have it. Do you really think it can be obtained so easily, Rachel Gardner? You would point that chip knife of Zack's at me with trembling hands. How did you know this was Zack's knife? Oh, I know. Twas I who brought him here. Though look at him. His body is a battered, tattered, bloody mess. And thou hast deceived him, foul demon. Witch. No. This is... Snap! What? <laughs> okay, he called her a witch. Rachel, what hast thou done to them? Danny was a smart and sensible man, which is exactly why he knew this place like the back of his hand, and refrained from self-indulgent conduct. And what about Isaac? He is quite simple. To rephrase it, quite pure. And now he is treated horribly, greatly suffering to grant your wish to die by his hand. Wouldn't you agree that this all transpired since your encounter? I, I haven't done anything. You are an enigma, Rachel. Just who are you? Not willing to answer, let me remind you that you stand before God. Ha <laughs> ha! Just as I expected. You have no true faith in God. No, I believe in following the word of God. Then, why is that? Why do you feel that way? Tis not that you will not answer. Tis is that you cannot answer. Correct? Rachel Gardner. Your heart is smeared by deceit, simply by virtue of the belief that God has chosen you. And you are a witch who means to deceive my angels. No! Well then, you shall be put on trial to find out. Oh! Oh! <laughs> God desires the pure, and you are charged with being a witch who has deceived my angels. In any case, you must be cleansed. I am not a witch. Nay, you are a witch who forged a pact with Isaac, are you not? My promise with Zack is a sworn oath to God. Ha! You would even dare to use God as your shield. Then let me emphasize what you need not forget. Tis not your choice to make, but that of God's. Now, we shall contest thee. Let the trial commence. Is anyone present to testify against this person? There sure is, right here. Oh, hi. Hello all. I'm your witness. I'll testify to why this wonderful sinner is such a cruel, heartless woman. Hold it! Don't leave me out. Objection! Oh. I could testify all day about what makes Rachel so lovely. But knowing how stubborn she is, I'm more in the mood to humiliate her. I'm the only one who can testify for who she really is. You're still alive. Ah, uh, Rachel. Rest assured as I am here in your corner. I'm here to defend you. Remember, I'm on your side. Hmm. A testimonial triumvirate of sorts. Very well. Each shall take a turn giving a testimony. Now, who shall go first? Me, me, Reverend. Pick me to go first. Huh? That's not fair, Kathy. I call firsties. No offense, Eddie, 
But that's just not gonna happen. I'm first in line. Why? Oh, why? You didn't even give a reason. The biggest victim of this woman's villainy is Moa. Unlike you creeps, I didn't become sickly infatuated with her from the start. Oh god, why you gotta be so hysterical all the time? That's quite a mouth you have, Kathy. I look forward to your testimony. Make haste, I grow impatient. Have the witnesses reached a decision yet? Yes, Reverend. I'll be going first. Aw, oh, man. You always gotta get your way. Alright, Eddie. Let's take our leave for now. Oh, good. Good. I'll have to voice everybody. <laughs> oh, God. You may begin your testimony, Catherine Ward. I got this in the bag. Listen well, ladies and gentlemen. This demon may look like an innocent, gentle woman on the outside. But her heart is this blackest charcoal, bonafide witch. I am not. Case in point, she lies through her teeth. A common collected pathological liar. Hmm. Is there any evidence in thine testimony to prove Rachel a witch? Yes, like you wouldn't believe. I was cast down from my position as a condemner by her malicious hand. There I was, sitting high and mighty, watching the torture unfold. Then Zack proceeded to slash himself, because this woman told him something. One would say that Isaac Foster's stature as sinner was also crippled by this meddling woman. The whole display was so pathetic that it made me furious. I ventured down to meet them head on. Then, what do you think this woman does without even batting an eyelash? She shoots me! A condemner outfoxed and shot by a sinner. That's not something that should ever happen. That woman's nothing but a wily wolf in a sinful sheep's clothing. I mean, how could she cast me down to such a horrid place? Only a demon could do such a thing. Not really. I have no memory of intentionally outfoxing you or destroying your reputation. You did destroy it, you demon. And do you have any idea what hurts most of all? She enjoyed shooting me. <laughs> you had Gatling guns on your wall, so... There's no if, ands, or buts about it. This is a witch we're dealing with. I vote for water torture. <laughs> I want to see you struggle and squirm. Give me a rush of excitement that even surpasses last time. Do you want to see it that badly? Huh? Do you truly want that to happen to me? I've heard enough. Uh, Reverend, we still haven't sentenced her yet. You are not the sentencer, Catherine Ward. Besides, what do you seek from someone who you deem to be a witch? That will be all. Moving on, I call the next witness. State your testimony against her. Oh, he's next? Okay. Yippee! It's finally my turn. You guys are all so self-centered. Try to have a little compassion. Right, Rachel? Edward Mason, are you capable of testifying against this person? Yep, Reverend, I sure am. I'll go over the good and the bad about her. Then begin. Uh, Rachel's such a cutie. Her voice is like a songbird's. My favorite type of voice. That, and she's kind of like me. We're also close in age as well. Plus the way she knows exactly what she wants and goes for it. Which is exactly why I should have met you earlier, Rachel. I, uh, knew who you were, but the reason I fell for you was, uh, because I knew that you were a lot like me. Rachel, I know what you did. It was you who buried the bird on B6, right? Yes. That's why I was convinced we'd have chemistry. Not to mention that you spoke of wanting to die. The perfect wish for me. But Rachel, you got a bit stubborn, didn't you? You didn't listen to anything I had to say. 
I tried so hard to charm my way into your heart in so many ways. Everything, everything was for you, Rachel. But it was no use. Even though you never accepted my advances, I held out in hopes that you'd eventually say yes. I even came to sweep you off your feet in total darkness, too. And after all that, guess what happened to me? I was slashed by Zack and left all by my lonesome in the grave. I like graves and all, but that wasn't the ending I desired at all. But that's where I finally realized the biggest thing that sets us apart. I really wanted Rachel. Everything I did was for her. But Rachel was different. Rachel did everything for herself and her for self only. How mean, you meanie. Her sugary whispers about wanting to be killed were all for her sake only. How truly self-centered and selfish. And stubborn. I'm so stubborn. I may have no clue why you'd pick Zack over me. Could you not jump? Because I can't read what you're saying. This is probably just Rachel being selfish again. Oh, thank God. She shows no regard for anyone's happiness. And that's what got me thinking. Isn't all of that something that a witch would do? Right? Don't you think so, Rachel? That's why I vote that... Rachel will be sentenced to hang in a spike-laden pit of death. Straight down the pit she'll go, and then I'll make her happy. What? Are you angry? S sorry, but it's all your fault. Talk to me. Don't ignore me. Enough. What? But wait, Rachel hasn't answered me about anything yet. You are being misguided by the likes of a witch, Edward Mason. A witch can see right through a heart that embraces and fears her. That will be all. An unyielding witch you are, I'm not a witch. Why am I saving? Moving on, I call the next witness. State thine testimony against her. You're not dead, why are you here? Are the ridiculous testimonies over now? Hey, Rachel, you seem at ease, no? Are you relieved I'm here? Daniel Dickens, you are willing to testify. Yes, of course, Reverend. I mean, somebody's got to do a decent job of testifying for Rachel. I must be the one to sing Rachel's praises. Hey, Rachel, you know I'd never misunderstand you, right? Then begin. To be truthful, it's ridiculous to testify about something so plain as the light of day. That's how much everyone misunderstands Rachel. It all started in the therapy room where I first met her. At the time, I was looking for the perfect pair of peepers. Living peepers forever frozen in death. Naturally, even dead peepers would do, but they get all cloudy. But it was not meant to be. After all, an average Joe's peepers change immediately depending on their emotional state. Despair to hope, disappointment to malice. Well, it comes with my profession. At the time, I was in charge of counseling her. Looking back on it now, it makes me so happy. Never have I seen such magnificent, such fascinating peepers. Such blue, murky and tranquil lakes among darkness, enough to steal my heart. Then, during one of my sessions with her, the most obvious thing occurred to me. Her peepers were the very ones I sought. Alive and forever frozen in death. God dang it, Danny. Are you gonna jump too now? I mean, there's no arguing that her heart is just, just odd. A pitiful, helpless soul. Daniel Dickens. Is what I say not true? Daniel. There's no way her soul could ever be saved. Danny. I mean, it's because, it's because her soul. Stop it. What? Her soul what? 
Oh, come on. Her soul can't be saved. I mean, because her soul consumes others without mercy or remorse. A soul that buries and steals anything it can. Hmm. What's wrong, Rachel? Oh, what lovely peepers you have. May I look at them? Oh, and when we were reunited in B5, she was acting a bit strange. Even now, she seems off though. Look, now you're almost back to your old self. Everything will be alright as long as I'm here. Why don't we get through this together? Daniel Dickens Sorry. Is that your testimony? I could go into more detail about what makes her so wonderful, if you'd like. No need for that. I think I've heard more than enough. Not to mention, your testimony was rather condemning. Witness, you may now leave. It'll be alright, Rachel. You heard me, right? I said the real you shouldn't have its soul stolen. What? Bye? Rachel Gardner. Your sentence has been determined. You too heard the claims by each of them. Danny's was especially telling. He is the most in tune with your background. Twas certainly Danny who watched over you the longest. And twas Danny who bore witness to the truth and never refuted you. He is no doubt infatuated with you, sorceress. None of that's my fault. Dr. Danny's just being selfish. Have you ever considered that you are the selfish one, Rachel Gardner? Eddie said so in his testimony, about how you neglect everything besides your own ambitions. And then there's Kathy. What an unfortunate soul. On top of tricking her to go as far as to entrance her in your entrance her in your spell. To see a woman of pride like her reduced to an empty shell of her formal self. How appalling. You are a witch. No. Am I wrong? You are unable to even refute a single claim made against thee. Well, witch. Let thee be cleansed. Now the witch shall be burned at the stake. Oh! I'm not a witch. Who would believe words spilling forth from the mouth of a witch? No. Even after hearing the testimonies, you remain steadfast in your claim. You murdered their hearts. Yes, you murdered their angelic hearts. You played them like violins and left them for dead. What a barbaric feat. And now, you plan to pull the same stunt, even with Isaac Foster. Am I right? Yes, another sacrifice for your selfish ambition. Stop it, you're wrong. Now. Whoa. It's hot, so hot. Admit you are a witch. Reveal thyself to us. And let the sacred flame sanctify thyself to God. I am not a witch. Besides, nothing like that's written in the Bible. But of course, Rachel Gardner. That's because your so-called God doesn't exist. But you've been using the name of God this whole time. Yes, because I am referring to my God. What? I am a servant of God. 
You might call me the god of this place. So you mean that you're god? Why, yes. Here, I am the closest being to god. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I won't believe you. A faithful heart is the significance of God's existence, my poor, dear Rachel. You never had that from the start. What is happening? Whoa! It can't be. It simply can't be. God doesn't exist? How? That just can't be. I won't accept it. I can't accept it. That preacher insisted that he is God, but he can't be. He's wrong. I don't wish to be killed by that God. But my God doesn't exist. Zack. Zack. But I want Zack to kill me. so cold. It's so hot, yet something cold is in my hands. This... What's this? Uh, what was it again? Something... Something precious to me. Something that I broke and ruined, yet protected me this whole time. Wait! I'll try to remember. The knife! Uh, sex knife! A chip knife is thrust into the floor. It's cold. It's chipped, yet cut so well. Uh, well now, my god is here after all. Oh! Uh, how have you awoken? The strange things I've seen on this floor were all illusions. It's what you've shown to my heart. My God has opened my eyes. Then, I wasn't able to purge the witch within thee. I'm not a witch. I've not made any covenants. There was an oath. It was an oath from my God. I see. The witch in you has chosen to perceive it that way. Even if you are mistaken, even if what you say is a fabrication of lies, you do not care, it seems. None of that matters. Oh! Hurry and give me that medicine. Oh, pitiful witch, who does not love anything but thyself, follow me. Give it, give it! Tis further in the back. After you. Why? Well, Zack's asleep and I don't know what you'll do. I see. I'm gonna save. Part of me's telling me that I need to stop the episode right now, but I can't! Come on! There's medicine on hither shelf. And you guys think I'm being mean when I stop the episode. I want to know what happens too. We got to save Zack. The shelf is lined with drugs with such as antiseptic solution, hemostatic agents, and hemantics. Okay, acquired medicine. This should definitely make him better. I'll go back to Zack. Thank you. I'm going back to Zack. Wait. You do not intend to kill me? Why would I? You now believe in the new god, 
dost thou not? The existence of multiple gods will cause nothing but trouble. Besides, you are not one to be merciful. Do you stand in my way? If not, then there's no need for me to do so. I mean, I have no use for you. Interesting word choice. I see. Then I shall offer you one last piece of advice. The being known as God despises liars and the impure. That is, if your so-called God should actually exist. Rachel Gardner, it will all catch up with you soon. Okay, I got the medicine. Time to go back to Zach. Okay, so while we're doing this, I have a theory. I'm not going to sprint because I don't know if this is true because in my head, it doesn't make sense. There's a door here. I had a feeling it was an illusion. Okay. All right, so before I go any further, I just want to like throw this out there. I don't, I don't know anything about the game, but the way they were calling, um, the way Gray was calling everyone else his angels and that we were the impure, we were the witch, it almost makes it feel like everything is backwards like say for example we are actually in hell right and that she is saving these individuals and taking them away from like being coming a demon see what i'm saying like the the backwards of what you would think um like somebody who's pure and impure so when somebody who is impure like with the name tag zach's worked but hers didn't because she hasn't done anything wrong I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, because I could be 100% wrong. She could be an evil being, but it makes sense to me because like she hasn't killed anybody and she's telling the truth. And he said that the existence of uh, the existence of God, should it exist, hates liars and the impure. So he, that God would hate these existences right here and now. You see what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? But if you're in hell, then obviously God doesn't exist. It's only going to be like evil. I don't know, though. I don't know if that's the case or not. I need to talk to Zach first. Zach? Good. He's just asleep. The least I can do is apply the medicine first. But I don't know. If you guys are, like, kind of, like, vague on the story, um, let me know what you guys think. If you know what happens, obviously don't, don't like, ruin it for everybody else, because it's fun to theorize, too, but you can lead me on either the correct way or the incorrect way, but that just seems to be what kind of clicks in my head right now. I guess this is the kind of medicine applied externally. His wounds are serious, but his bleeding's mostly stopped. Then I just applied and bandage him. The burn scars were originally there. Huh? Zack, are you awake? What the hell are you doing? I brought some medicine, so I was applying it to you. So you made it back all right? Yep. Yep. You're all beat up. Was Danny there? How'd you get the medicine? Dr. Danny wasn't there. I got the medicine from the priest on this floor. Oh, that guy. Uh, hold still. <sighs> My wounds are probably open back up like this. I'll stitch you up. I'm not half bad at sewing. Back off. I'll do it myself. Are you good at sewing too, Zach? <laughs> huh? I knew it. I'll take care of it. And I want to stitch up your stomach. Fine. Whatever. Don't complain to me if it gets gross. They're so sweet together. Wait here. I'll cut the thread. Your hands are all beat up. Yeah, but it's alright. It doesn't hurt. Man, you're some piece of work. Look at you all calm, touching my messed up stomach. Kudos for getting the medicine and coming back alive in a weak state, but still. You don't got to do this too. Hey, Ray, why are you doing all this for me? Hey, can I use your knife to cut the thread? This knife cuts like a dream. Hey, quit playing dumb and answer me. Answer me. After all, Zack, you're my god. Interesting approach. What? What are you talking about? Hey, 
My knife. Uh, it's a bit chipped. I'm really sorry about that. Huh? What the hell's wrong with you? But I guess it's okay. He's so nice. Still, this knife is razor sharp and really helped me out. I'm sorry. I really appreciate it, though. It's about time I would stitch up those wounds for you. Hold still for a second, Zach. Good God! Ow! <laughs> hey, stop it! <laughs> that hurts! Does it hurt? Hell yes, it does! I figured you wouldn't feel a thing. Man, you're as dumb as they come. I'm not some pain-loving masochist. Come on. Your god commands you to do a good job. <laughs> you got it. Okay, so my theory is completely out the window now. That's not what I thought was going to happen, but, uh, interesting? Hey, Zach. What is it now? Do these burns not hurt? Huh? Nah, not really. Not anymore, they don't. Oh. Okay. I'll get back to stitching, then. When you're done, let's head out right away. Okay. Oh, and do something about your own wounds. What? Not only your hands, but your legs could use some attention, too. If you can't run or something, when well, we gotta move fast, then we're messed up. <laughs> oh, alright. I'll borrow some of your bandages if you have any to spare. That works. So, are we going? Okay. What's the plan? We still haven't found the elevator that takes us up to the next floor. Plus, we gotta pass through the area where the snakes are to get back to the elevator that takes us down. I suppose we even checked out the back of the room where Zack's medicine was. True. Okay, I'm pretty sure this episode is going to end very soon, but this this video here is going on for far too long. And as you guys know, if we do finish episode three, we'll just roll right into episode four. So I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next MAMJ. Let's play. Huh? What? This ain't no biggie to me. No, your wounds aren't fully healed. It could be fatal if they open up. I said it's no big deal. But no. Huh? Ray. What's wrong with your face? Zach?